Hello there. Last episode, the Mercedes SL55 got hustled, and today we are up to the Sopranos 5x5, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? It's your boy, Ellie Moses, your 23 year old law and film shooting here in Australia, absolutely shooting his shot. And like I said, we are up to episode 5 of the Sopranos season 5 today, and I'm recording this right after episode 4. That's you know, you know how we roll on this, baby. Double recordings, triple recordings, double uploads. We're on fire at the moment with this show. Um, we're going to get into this episode. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's have to really smash it. Let's go. This episode's titled Irregular Around the Margins. Let's have some fun with this thing, baby. Ooh, season five is cooking. Tad. Hey. What are you doing here? Tiny looks like he just came out of the men's room. Snorting so coke, you know. <laughs> what are the odds? Promise me, no uh, drinking and driving. <laughs> Who's your designated driver? I'm not the one with all the dents in your car. <laughs> Meadow looks out of it as well. Need some money? Yeah, the, the, the odds of the odds of running into your daughter at the club, like, oh man, that's gotta be embarrassment from both sides, even Tony. I wonder what the fuck she's thinking. I'm sorry, Tone. Some kid had a seizure upstairs. It's been a horrible night. Hey, Tom. Vito and Jean just called. They're five minutes away. We'll leave it. That's this season in a nutshell. Problems right, on yeah. problems upon problems. Fudge, butter, bun, on Broadway and 18th. Right. No room to breathe. And Tony's got something on his forehead. Number two. I'll take you to your car. No, I gotta go now. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Is it like a yeah? It's a skin graft on his forehead or something. Irregular around the margins. <laughs> Just keep a little pressure. I'm gonna get this down to the lab. See what's what. Yo, who's this nurse? There we go. You okay? You think he got it all? We hope so. Meantime, there's a canteen on level L. I'll let you know when the results come back. Nurse Ratchet over here. Damn. Does having a bowel movement relieve the pain? Yeah. Would you describe the diarrhea as loose or liquid? Liquid. I don't want to hear that. So I'm afraid to be away from the toilet. I'm so scared I'm going to have an accident. Is this tender? No. Parallel scenes of uh, Tony and Aid getting treatment, and the FBI agent asking Aid whether she has feelings for Tony. How's your personal life? What do you mean? Well, sometimes GI disturbances are stress related. Is there anything usual that might be giving you the gym jams? I hear you're spending time with today's youth. You <laughs> lost me. <laughs> said she saw you at Adriana's club. I can explain my business to you now. After so many years. Well, it's your life, Tony. Got that right. What'd you do to your head? Did you fall again? Bangs it on the medicine chest. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Here's your allowance. But it actually looks like fruit. Yep, it's so hard. Oh, she painting. I thought she was reading the book that Wegler yeah. recommended. <laughs> Make sure you get the bitter apple. <laughs> Irritable bowel syndrome. I gotta know every detail. I could be really sick, Christopher. And yeah, my aunt Josephine had colon cancer. A whole asshole rotted out. Do I need to know these details? This I may episode? have to go into therapy. Plus, they may put me on Prozac. The diarrhea. To help me cope and handle stress, which is a lot of what causes it. What do you got to be stressed about? Right on. Bar? War, Christopher. Middle East. You don't listen to the president. We're going to mop the floor with the whole fucking world. The whole world's going to be under our control. So what are you worked up about? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How times have changed. Actually, maybe not really. I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Madness all around. Tony is spending a lot of time. No, I'm done. Awfully a lot of time at the crazy horse. Irritable 
bowel syndrome. My mother had that all her life. See this? Yeah, I noticed that. What happened? It's cancer. What? Skin cancer? Squamos. Oh. oh my god, that's terrible. Well, they think they got it all. Knock wood. <laughs> Just <laughs> cancer. The things that go into your head. Sure. I got a top guy, though. Cats. I just recommended him. Naturally. I did a Google on it. And, like, the doctor, too. They, they all say a lot of it's psychological. <laughs> so on top of everything, now I'm a head case. Dr. Google, baby. Come on, stop blaming yourself. Christopher don't want to know. Not that I blame him. Hey, I saw that look up and down, Tony. Uh, I gotta take off. Yo. Hey, he scanned her. His volleyball thing. So don't say anything to anybody, okay? People here can't you? They start to bury you already. <laughs> you don't tell anybody what I told you. <laughs> All right, take care of yourself. Say hi to Anthony. Yeah. Hey, these are the rooms. Such a good father. Uh. I wish my dad had been like that. <laughs> Night D. Night D, really? Never it's a straight shot on 995 to Raleigh. You give this shit to the fence, I'll meet you in Winston Salem. We'll load up the six and come home. Is that the cigarette thing you were talking about? Six different kinds of dope you get to take for a stomach ache. I got a fucking impaction. I can't take shit besides oil or clove because I'm sober. I know, it's hard. I'm sorry. Have a nice trip. I love you. Call me. She's got diarrhea. Whoops. What? That The level changes. Um. Okay. I expected some guys from New York. So. No problem. I got plenty to do out there. Yo, Aid and Tony doing an awful lot of hanging out. And Put this on. Oh, please, it's called the Lost Boys. Still has been ragging on me all week for me to play him here. Well, at least I can pour a glass of wine without him giving me. The expression. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that look. The, uh -huh. uh, the constipated owl. Look. <laughs> you know, when I first met you, I was scared of you. Really? Yeah, but I'm scared of everybody. It's always my first reaction. <laughs> You're not scared of me now, are you? No. I love how, like, the one eye painting in the background kind of you reflects, like, the lighting at the moment. Huh? With Tony and Aid both having sort of, like, game. one eye only visible just to the shadows. Hey, they're spending too much time together, man. This is more time than they need in this show. These interactions are awfully too long, especially with Chris awake. No, it's, it's a round thing in the middle there. Mm. How you feeling? Everything all right in here now? Your stomach don't, all right? Don't, I know what you're doing. Don't distract me. Oh. Oh. Hmm. I've been hustled. <laughs> Hey, she talked to the FBI agent about not blowing Tony off, and she's in that position at the mo You get what I mean? Like, it's just interesting. No, 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 no. Coke makes you do crazy things, from what I've heard. No, no, don't go there. I'll jump out of my chair if those lips touch. I will jump. Thank the Lord. Flirting is cheating. I don't care what Ella says. That's Johnny Sax boys. What are you to tell me about the traffic again? Yeah, our friend sent this for you. Hey, you don't want those rumors spreading around. Tony talked about the rumors about the cancer. I think the rumors about this aid relationship is even worse. Ha 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 ha. 
He's back. Arnold Schwarzenegger vibes. I'll be back. He's back. The return of the king. <laughs> It almost feels like episode one again. Like the first therapy session. And Tony's ashamed to be here. <laughs> Thank you for taking the appointment. <laughs> and, and I know I'm on probation and, and I deeply regret what I did. I love Melfi, man. She's, she's, <laughs> I don't know, man. She wifey Beyonce. material. Beyonce. I know what you're thinking. So? Well, nothing happened. But it could have very easily. 20 more she seconds. Really got to me, this young lady. She, uh... 20 more seconds, it's on. What? This is a very big step. Yeah, tell me about it. I mean that you've come here to talk about this impulse instead of just acting on it without thinking. Yo. I always think. Yo. Really? Yeah. Having sex with your mistress's cousin, like the mistress wasn't enough to piss off your wife. <laughs> Yo, I, I swear, if it wasn't for that knock on the door, him and Aid were going there. That's cheating in my opinion. Drop that gorgeous. Young enough? Fuck them all. This is something you're contemplating? What about your nephew, man? What do you mean, what? fuck them all? It'd be a disaster. Yes. Major proportions. Yes. Carmela, I, I get holes financially. There'd be no reason to go after that. Uh, and my nephew, it, it would kill him. After years of grooming him to be my number two. That'd be very bad for the girl. She doesn't deserve that. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know part of it's this father figure thing and... I don't want to count of hers ran off. It would be like committing an act of symbolic incest. Whatever. But what am I going to do? I got lucky the first time because I was able to control myself, but you only get one of those. Rationalizing. I can't <laughs> control myself. <laughs> you can. Tell him, Melfi. I don't know. School the boy. It's, for women. it's all about up here with them. She could make a play for you. You might want to think about how you're going to establish limits and boundaries. For example, you could tell her she means a great deal to you, but you think of her as a daughter. Yes. Even if I want to fuck her brains out. <laughs> yes, this even if you want to. a milestone for you. You're at a very important crossroads. The oh, way I said it, I think it was like episode two or three. The way Melfi pronounces important. Oh! <laughs> Once you want to avoid doing something you know is wrong, and would be destructive both to yourself and to the people you care about. That's growth. That's progress. Just tell me what I'm supposed to do. You have to be honest with yourself. I know this is a powerful urge. But if you can't keep it in your pants, you have to stay away from her. Hey, Tony's got to do the Melfi here. <laughs> what Melfi thinks about Tony and her resisting the urges, she's got to do, yeah. he's got to do the same. <laughs> Not long ago, you stood in my outer office. I recall you used the words drop dead gorgeous about me and how you had to have me. I said I wouldn't date you, and look, you survived. What a horrible fucking job you have. <laughs> how do you do it? But what happens now is your choice. Act and create a bed of misery. Or you can look at this as a chance to do something good. You say she respects you. Be worthy of respect. See if you can remain a, a friend to this woman. A help to her. The ducks! The mighty ducks! You know, Tony had ducks one time. <laughs> his pool. And his pool. You need to find out where Chris went. I'm getting this vibe from him. Who? Tony? He's really nice. He listens. He's kind of attractive. You're an engaged Definitely woman. An alpha male. But what if Christopher found out? 
What? I'm not gonna fuck him. <laughs> then what are you talking about? I love Christopher, and sooner or later we're gonna get out from under all this shit and leave this fucking state. Yo, her telling obviously the FBI have more people wired up than aid realized we got the other individual right there um the guy with the glasses and yeah he's flown on the radar for a very long time so i wouldn't be surprised if you know the fbi i know it could have been johnny Sachs' crew but if the fbi themselves plant this little seed the rumor um from this information receiving from aid about tony's feelings for aid's feelings for tony um plants that guy and he starts spreading that rumor around like you never know um and yeah that could cause disastrous um consequences for like the the family um and just the whole crew in general um and now this episode started irregular around the margins and there's always this double meaning about um episodes even sometimes more than one meaning um and this one could possibly mean irregular around the margins maybe tony's um talking about like how he how he looks in terms of like the skin condition um the skin cancer he had to deal with and obviously him looking irregularly or it could be about the relationship between him and aid um in terms of like that's such an irregular relationship that came out of nowhere like a randy orton rko like out like literally out of nowhere this episode um and that's like an irregular rate relationship to everyone not only um everyone in the show the character characters especially um what's gonna happen to chris and that stuff like in terms of um how he's gonna react if he does find out um but like it's an irregular relationship to everyone on the outside even the viewers themselves it's like this came out of nowhere what the heck so yeah it's, this is episode is crazy so far she's a good looking woman and she wants to fuck barney rubble we really don't know him I, I know the FBI are meant to be the good guys, but come on, man. The way they portray these guys. Obviously, they joke around in the office, like, and... Oh, I know these guys are doing the right thing. I know, I know. Listen, I know. But it's just... They're insufferable, the way they're portrayed. And I know the show writes them out to be that way, so you side with the main characters. But, like, the show is not helping us help me of it. <laughs> AIDS being freaking puppeted around like she doesn't even realize. I feel sorry for her. No problem. I made a resolution. I gotta start spending a lot more time on the floor. Crack the whip. <laughs> hey, crack the whip just like on Lorraine. Ba ba, and then she got ba. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I think I wanna grab uh, forty winch till Patchy gets you. But you don't have Chrissy's cell, do you? He called, but he didn't leave a new number. Oh, she want to get those numbers for the FBI. The I'll 346. Let's go back tomorrow. Oh, excuse me. I'll come back. Oh, I'm all right. Well, back there, look the regular around the margins. <laughs> Every time I see anything now, I think I got melanoma. I can imagine. Hey, do you can... Hi, Adriana. Crazy horse? Yeah, I need a call, please. You're replacing the alternator. You want a belt? What I could really use is some... <laughs> I wouldn't say no. Get me motivated to clean the house before Christopher gets back. Took them all out. It's two o'clock. Uh, Cross-eyed Billy probably left the bing already. I know a guy, Andre. He's always up. Well, cancel the car. I'll give you a ride. Ah. Oh. You know who thinks you're cute? It's Molly. Yeah, di gotta be over 30, isn't divert she? from the subject. She's 31. You know who you ought to introduce me to is that friend of yours. Oh. The one you brought over to the house that time. Danielle? Tall, kind of blondish. <laughs> <head. laughs> Danielle. <laughs> she's dead. To me. <laughs> she's dead to me. Yeah. She, she drowned on a picnic. Well, I thought I picked up on something between her and me. I'm not trying to be conceited. Tony! Yo, was there an actual animal on the road, or was Aid having flashbacks to her dog right there? Because that animal disappeared real quick. That was a Harry Potter. That was a Harry Potter thing, okay? That was Professor McGonagall apparated in and out, probably shapeshifted, transfigured. 
And now they're back in the emergency war together. Wait till Chrissy comes back. They say you're going to be fine. They just want to keep you here for observation. You know, be on the safe side. I don't even remember what happened. There was a raccoon in the road. I swerved. How's your car? Forget it's about clean. the car. Total. Probably saved our life. I'm beat. I'm gonna hit the fucking rack. Have Aid cook me up a nice carbonara. What's the matter? Well, I'll tell you, but Adrienne is in the hospital. She was in an accident. What? When? Last night around 2 o'clock. How did they know? Jesus Christ, what happened? Is she all right? She got banged up, but she's gonna be okay. The drinking and driving, I told her. Where is she? Mount Mercy in Dover. Dover? Apparently, they swerved to avoid a deer in the woods. They. They. They? Yep. Car and Tony. Tony? Soprano? Uh huh. Is he all right? Not a scratch. The fucking luck on this guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dover. Right. She's got an aunt she's close to out there who's been sick. She's, uh, she's friends with Tony's aunt. All right, somebody take me to get my car. Right? I better get over there. Fabio, put it up. Yeah, that's your fiance. You should be more worried than that. I don't know. Like, thought I'd die in there without a cigarette. What? So you're just not gonna talk? I almost got killed, Christopher. I'm just curious. What the fuck were you doing in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, in a car with my uncle? He was driving me home. Fucking Dover. We were talking. We were going to get something to eat. I get off of work. I don't want to go right home. You weren't even there. No, I was in a fucking rider rent, busting my ass with a bunch of rednecks making a living to buy you alcohol and coke and all the other shit you shovel into your mouth. Two o'clock in the fucking morning? Don't fucking lie to me. I can't stand it. Nothing was going on, Christopher. I should have made you walk home. I swear to God. You know how this looks? Don't talk to me. You shut your mouth. Want her to see me? Adriana, okay? It's fine. People who don't clean up after their pets. Shoveling shit. <laughs> Pop this in that basket for me, will you? It's blind luck, that accident. Cop told me he thought he was coming up on a fatality when he saw the car. I'd be thinking the same thing if I were you. But it's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. The car was in the shop. I was driving her home from work. That's all. We were looking to get a burger. In Dover. What difference does it make? You don't seem to give a shit. She almost died. She could have been paralyzed or, or, or yeah, scarred up. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Like You got to push on? What were you doing out there alone in a car with my fiance? We were talking about you, you selfish prick. And how you were the best thing that ever happened to her. Oh, you don't think this fucking devastates me? Well, frankly, you scored so far over your head when you got her. What do you expect? The fuck are you talking about? She's a knockout. A 10. And look at you. You're average at best. So you better reconcile yourself with that, or you're gonna be fucking paranoid your whole life. Well, so this is my fucking fault now. Nothing happened, and I'm not gonna say it again. And you should have married that girl two years ago. Everybody knows you've been the biggest fucking cool sound around the past four or five years. Your midlife crisis. You fucker catches me. Oh, hey, he's kind of right on that one. <laughs> like, on everything I hold sacred. On my children. There's nothing going on between me and Adriana. There was something there. Oh. I know that was probably the coke talking, but come on, still. I love the winter wonderland calendar right there, or poster, you know, the snow, the coke. But Adriana suffered a severe blow to the head. Adriana got caught giving a big guy a blowjob. There we go. When the paramedics found him. She had his cock still in her mouth. Now, statistics shows that most single car fatalities are the result of guys popping their load behind the wheel. 
Oh my god. Came all over the sun visor. Oh my gosh. The rumors. These are the rumors. San Severino. Guess who went down on Tony Soprano? Yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, this is not good. These edits are perfection here. Hey, old lady, the next thing she suck is a tailpipe. That pretty little trim can suck this pipe anytime she wants. <laughs> like you'd ever have a shot. Hey, let me tell you something. When Christopher was in rehab, she was calling me all the time. I was this close. And you got a problem, because your bar jaw isn't even that long. <laughs> See, it's see, it, it, that editing right there was perfect in terms of like just having one character say sort of like one line and that transition to another character um, in terms of like another line that's so out of proportion from what the story actually is. And it kept going even blown out of more proportion, out of more proportion. And these are like I said at the beginning of the episode, these are the rumors you don't want spreading around. Um, and oh man, Tony might take action here and it's not going to be good. Like, I just want to go back to the edits here, especially. shows that most single car fatalities are the result of guys popping their load behind the wheel. Apparently, he came all over the sun visor. My old lady, the next thing she suck is a tailpipe. That pretty little trim can suck this pipe anytime she wants. <laughs> like you'd ever have a shot. Hey, let me tell you something. When Christopher was in rehab... See, nothing happened, but the worst the thing that could possibly happen is, is that everyone thinks something fun. happened. Your bar isn't even that long. They take it as gospel. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Didn't sound like nothing. I want to hear a big joke. Take it easy. We're just shooting the shit. We were just talking about my brajol. Oh, yeah? What about it? So, a Dillian, huh? I asked him a fucking question. What are you breaking my balls for? I want a fucking answer. What's so fucking hilarious, you fucking parade float? Oh! I'm a fucking captain now. You don't talk to me like that. Oh, come on, guys. Don't put your hands on me. Chrissy, for Christ's sake. Fuck all of you. It's such a fine line here. Tensions are... Tensions are ever so high. This is not good. And this is why this show is so great. So, talk to me, guys. There's a casserole in the mic. You fucking lying bitch! Ow! Sander, what are you doing? You were sucking his cock! Georgie told me everything. The sergeant on the operating table said you were moaning Tony's name. What are you talking about? Fucking lie to me. What were you doing in Dover then? <laughs> See? See? You can't tell me because I know what you were doing. Your other dope dealers there. I remembered. Go ahead. Deny it. Okay. I was going out to see Andre, but I wasn't sucking anybody's cock. How could you say that? Oh, so you two were just going to go toot up a bunch of lines, go fucking bird watching? Oh, you son of a bitch. I was going to stay up all night and clean this. Everybody knows about it. Everybody's talking about it. Straight up assaulting aid again. You want me to use your bitch? You're fucking killing me. No, I don't. I love you. <laughs> you motherfucker. This could be a Ralphie 2.0 here, and I don't want it. Um. Get the fuck out of here. I never want to see you again. Dragged her right out of the house, man. I feel so sorry for H. She hasn't needed to endure this, especially with all the F. Oh, Chuck Liddell. Um, she didn't need to endure all this stuff. It's such a complicated process. It's not a complicated process. It's such a complicated scenario, and. I feel like it can be talked about forever. You can analyze it from so many different perspectives. And that's so that's what's so great about this season so far. And I've said it um, in terms of like there's problems upon problems upon problems. Every road you decide to take is not a straight path. Like there's so many roads, there's so many storylines this season. And there's problems circulating everywhere. And you've seen it in episodes this season where Tony's at like phone call here, phone call there, phone call there. And he's got to deal with this, he's got to deal with that. And this episode is just the pinnacle of that. And it's like the worst possible scenario where everybody's getting hurt from one little rumor right there um and i feel like tony and aid yeah they didn't help themselves they should have known their limits a bit earlier and drawn the line earlier um obviously you don't know you're going to get into a car accident like that see a raccoon on the road that gets spun then a rumor gets spread out about the hospital you're moaning his name um from like obviously they're having a little bit of fun together um and i don't condone what they were doing anyway going out to get the um cocaine and stuff like that um, because who knows, you saw what happened on the coke when um, they were alone in the office and 
so happened that Johnny Sex Boys walked in. Who knows what happens in the car when they're alone on coke? So um, something could have happened. And yeah, they did flirt. In my opinion, it was flirting. Um, obviously, nothing happened, but still, um, ah, those rumors, man. It's 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 gonna cause. Chris to do something stupid now, it might cause Tony to do something stupid to Chris. Um, and this situation needs, the, like the fire needs to be put out because this fire is ever so burning at the moment and it's burning from all areas here. Um, yeah, you need to call all fire units here, all fire departments to put this one out because the rumors are hurting everybody's relationships, not just Tony with Chris, not just Chris with aid right there, him literally dragging her out of the floor and chucking her out of her own house. Um, and like you saw with Vito, oh, Vito and Chris, like such a fantastic episode so far. And it goes again with the dark lighting this season as well. Everything's darker in lighting, darker in tone. Look, I saw you for 45 minutes straight. Don't I get a break? Hey, Jay, how's it going? Yeah, Uncle Tony. Tony B staying straight is the best thing. I need to talk to you. Hey, Jay, go upstairs. Study. Well, what about the pizza? Now. Study. Too comfortable, man, that guy. Like. Somebody told him what was going on in the car. There's nothing going on in the car. No, of course not, but he thinks there was. So he started drinking again, he beat up Adriana, and he threw out of the fucking house. Where's his fucking self-control, this guy? Little Paulie's out there looking for him to rein him in. But he was saying some crazy things about you. Oh, this goddamn kid. He had to chuck that drum set out the window. Who the fuck knows what he's capable of? Well, he knows where to find me. You see him, you tell him that. Yo, Chris has had so many chances. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the final line here. If this is the final straw, sorry. Yep, pack your bags, you're going back home. To a day early, huh? I'll go to the store in the morning. Look, relax. I'll go whatever you want. Permanent residency. Back again. Possibly not. He's just, you know, they're sharing. What the hell is wrong with him? Oh, now you see. What do you want, Tony? He couldn't bring this in himself? What, I can't even come in and say hello? What you want is to know if I heard the disgusting shit they're saying. At least have the guts to come out and ask me. It isn't true. You know what? Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. You gotta put your son in hiding because of your fucking philandering? Afraid he'll get caught in the crossfire, your own son? Christopher's upset. That's all. He could come over. He could say oh, some things that a that's kid That's why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could get dangerous in front leave. of um, AJ. Look at you. Fuck you. Fuck you! Oh man, the way oh, this season's acting is turned up a notch. It's unbelievable. Every interaction. Hey, get get the pizza box back. Come on, man. We need to eat. <laughs> See, it's it's the damage these rumors have done, whether true or not. You can't have this stuff going around. Especially to your niece. Your niece in law, whatever it, it's your niece, man. That's family. Oh, this guy's gonna do something. Yep. This is Patsy all over again. Rocking up drunk to Tony's. Oh no, Tony's it was Tony's house, but this is this is a part of Tony as well. This could get Chris whacked here. This could get Chris whacked. Me too. This kid ain't gonna show up, T. He's probably in some gutter. Yeah, hopefully he's warmed himself down. Good question regarding Tony B. I've loved the addition of Steve Buscemi this season. Um, and it seems like he's obviously going down the straight path he's chosen to um, and not get back in the game. But does him being surrounded by these guys constantly, you know, playing the games, the card games, um, and going to the high stake ones as well. Does that count as him still being in the game and being associated with these people? Um, because, you know, the wire could be there. He could be overheard in the conversations. You know, he's still a part of them. Um, even though he hasn't done anything, he hasn't done any hits that we know of. Um, so, like, I don't know what the case with him is because I feel like they're taking a back seat with him at the moment. You know, he had his shine when he came in in episode two. 
um, and three. Um, they set things straight with what he wanted to do, but I don't know. I just feel like with Feech gone, there might be bigger plans for him later on. Oh, Sylvia with the megaphone. <laughs> Yo, rolling up to the Bing with a gun. Yo, that's hit worthy. This is Silvio's place too, like. And that's that's the Meadowlands, man. That's the Meadowlands. The New Jersey Meadowlands. This is where buddies are placed. And we got all the boys here. This is not good. Let me the fuck out. I'll kill all of you. Fucking kill all of you. Oh, that's not the Meadowlands. No, no, the Meadowlands is a, like, it's got the water, right? Yeah, yeah. down the boss of a fucking family? Huh? You lied to me. You were scoring coke with her. She admitted it. So what? I can't relieve stress every once in a while. I don't got enough fucking problems. You sent me to North Carolina so you can fuck my girlfriend. Oh. What kind of fucking animal you think I am? The thought never even entered my head. You're a man. You're alone in a car with us. It did, but... You push me to this! Way I see it, Tony. He must have known the gun was empty. Look what he pumped into your car. What are you trying to say, Paulie? The fuck are you trying to say, Paulie? Huh? How do you tell me right now? You can take it into your heart that I did not do this shit. Well, this is as far as we go. Surely he's not next in line after this. Surely. Motherfucker. Tony, come on. Listen to somebody else for a change. Fuck him. Tony, try it my way. Listen to me. Tony B doesn't need to be here. Yo, I got it. Oh my gosh, this season's fantastic. And this really reminds me of the Pauly interact. Uh, not the Pauly interaction, the pussy um, when he got, you know, whacked. But obviously, it's a different location here but it's the ability of the show to use the location you know not rely on traditional music i score or score which i said time and time again um you have these sort of like marshlands here um or like the long grass area and you're relying on the wind you're relying on the rain to create that atmosphere you're relying on the natural lighting from the plantation the headlights from the car here to light the characters up and that's what this season's done so far i feel like it's relied a lot on natural lighting and that's why it looks a bit darker um and the colors look more natural and washed um and it's absolutely fantastic and then again a testament i have to give to this season and its ability to you know create beautiful wide long shots of all the characters in frame and you know to have close ups of characters and then cut away to everyone interacting in one scene and that's what breaking bad and better call saw i feel like took influence of from this show as well is that having characters in one frame in one shot um and having all the characters in the scene um in that one frame and you can you know just focus on a character um in that frame and think like look at how they're acting look at how they're acting and it just adds to like the reality of the show I, I, I almost real it feels it's great and they hold that long shot here as well. It's not a quick cutaway. Oh, it's so good. And Chris got off. I feel like that's three strikes, man. How many strikes has he had? Oh, so this was the guy. Mr. Uh, Soriano, what seems to be the matter? Soprano. I'm fine. It's my friend here needs to talk to you. Well, you know where ER admitting is, right? Look, uh, you got someplace maybe we could talk? It's 3 a.m. I just finished a 17 hour rotation. Was it this guy that spread the rumors? Any gunshot wounds or broken kneecaps? Two minutes. You're an excellent doctor. That's why I brought him here. Come on. Okay, I thought who spread the rumors about her moaning his, like, his name? That there was oral sex going on at the time of the wreck. Listen, hey, I. Hey, it... hey. Just a sec. Naturally, he's very upset. So I need you to tell him there wasn't. He's obviously feeling the pressure. He's just gonna fucking lie. I'm not in the custom of lying about anything. 
But whether somebody was getting something in the car, how could I possibly attest to that? Well, as the attending, you could Who's the cop attending? It's not possible. Excuse me? Well, for instance, if she was wearing a seatbelt, then there would have been abrasions to the lateral anterior aspect of the clavicle, wouldn't there? Or the right mid-sternum? Are you a physician? No, I'm a pre-board certified massage therapist. Almost licensed. <laughs> so do you have any of those kind of things? Actually, yes. On the right clavicle and the sternum just above the xiphoid process, which would indicate an upright position at the moment of impact. Okay, so what he's saying is that she was sitting up. Alright. Thank you, Doc. For the kids, make a wish foundation, whatever. <laughs> hey, I like this doctor. I like this Thank doctor. You. I like this doctor. He got morals and he stood by him. What do you want from me? I guess I believe you. I guess? That's not strong enough. You two footed veto. That's gotta be resolved. He was fucking laughing, which was wrong. Not the first time a character walked in on characters laughing and they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> but at this point now, it don't make no difference. Even if it wasn't true. It's what people think. Yeah, the damage is irreparable, I they feel know like. you were out there scoring coke with her. What do you care what people think? You know the truth. I gotta live in the world. And now I look like Joe Jerkoff. It's always going to be, you're marrying the girl Tony oh. Soprano got a blowjob off. That's that thought there. That's going to live forever in his mind. That's the cancer for Chris, I feel like. Tony had that you cancer in his foot. It's, I might as well have fucked her. I, I, exactly, I, exactly. The rumors are even worse. I said, the words are just as worse, even though you didn't do the act. Um, And I find it ironic how Tony had the cancer or the skin cancer in his head this episode, because that sort of um thought this episode the thought of what happened is going to live rent free in everyone's head forever that's the cancer that's going to live in everyone's head love it thanks i rang the doorbell six times nobody answered what are you doing here i want to talk to you if you came to pick him up he's not going oh so you believe all that shit they're saying huh Am I that horrible? Really? You didn't smoke this fire. I don't know what you did. What's gonna happen when your children hear about this? Meadow already suspects you. Suspects what? She saw you at the club. She said she thought you were coked out. What are you talking about? I don't do drugs. She knows about the accident. What do you think she's gonna think? With Anthony at that age? Well, come on, the kids. The kids, it's about you. Fine, so it's all about me. What do I mean, nothing to you? That I gotta live with this swirling around me? I look, forget about what they're saying. I'm asking you. You think I have sexual relations with her? Adriana is going to be a member of this family? Now, I want you to answer me truthfully. Look, I, I know I haven't been a fucking saint, all right? And, I, and you got plenty of issues on your own on that subject. But you haven't exactly been a fucking saint yourself. <laughs> that is true. But Tony's worse than Carmella ever will be. You think I would go near that girl like that? Yes, you did. You gotta lie to protect yourself, man. Yes, Carmella believes that because he's done it before. Thank you. Look, I'm asking you to pull with me to put a good face on this thing. For the sake of the kids and the, and his family. I gotta bail you out? It is never ending your bullshit. I'm not gonna lie, Carmela kinda looking hench this season, man. Eddie Fargo been hitting the weights, man. She, she, the arms are looking toned as hell. <laughs> All excited. Most of it's from the accident. You okay? What do you fucking think? Kicked out of my house, I may have ulcerative colitis, and you call me up. You'd like your permission to put a listening device in your business. Don't it's act like you care, you FBI agent. agent. I forgot your name, but like. There is no relationship. 
faster we get Tony and put him away, the sooner you can get on with your life. You can get a court order to install a device anyway, but this will make our life simpler. Fuck you. I do nothing for you people. You're not bugging my club. Hey, Juliana. It's a syndrome protecting abusers. If it would have been Christopher alone in a car with a woman, I would have killed him. Woohoo! <laughs> Damn! Hey, you don't want to know then about Chris's Gourmars. I just want to look at Tony's attire when he takes Chris to the Meadowlands. What's he wearing? The car was in the shop. I was driving her home from work. That's all. We were looking to get a burger. Yeah, here. In Dover. When Tony's talking with Chris here. What difference does it make? You don't seem to give a shit. She almost died. He's wearing this yellow suit here. And then... Hey, Jay, how's it, going? it seems like days have passed here when he interacts with Melfi again. Try here, right after this scene. Lady that I was... Where is it? Here. Might as well have... So... Because he's, he's wearing... He's wearing... He's wearing the same suit right there that he was when he was talking with Chris earlier on. And then it seemed like a day or two had passed um, after that interaction where he's talking with Melfi. So he talked with Chris and then obviously he had the night scene with AJ um, and AJ and um, AJ and Tony B. And then he took him to the, the Meadowlands, I think, or whatever, where he almost put a gun to his head. Uh, where he put a gun to his head. He almost whacked um, Christopher right there. And then in the scene... After that, he's obviously talking with Melfi. Now, I wonder if that's a little bit of non-linear storytelling and we're getting an insight to Tony's thoughts right after the interaction with Chris. Um, you know, the first interaction um, in after he found out where Chris walked into his office right here. And then obviously you have the whole thing with the butter being, you have the whole thing with aid. You have Tony hearing about it from Tony B, um, Chris pulling up to the butter Bing, and then they take Chris to the Meadowlands, um, and Tony's wearing something different. Um, I'm not too I, sure if I'm reading too much I into it right here, um, where he's talking with Melfi with the same suit. So did he visit Melfi right after he saw Chris at the butter Bing in the first um, instance before the whole shit went down? Um, or is it a situation of Tony doesn't have much in his wardrobe after Carmella threw it out? Um, because I wouldn't think that Tony, you know, gets suits. I'm just not sure if it's a maybe it's an editing mistake from the show or if it's a little bit of non-linear storytelling here from david chase where we're getting a little bit of insight into tony's thoughts post that interaction with chris at the butter bing um and he went straight to melfi after that before you know um him cooling down um going to the butter bing having the interaction with tony b and stuff like that um and then chris obviously pulling up and doing what he did yo every interaction with um carmella and tony like from that episode 13 in season four um white caps beyond to this season is fantastic all right why, why are we at vesuvio oh we got we on a double date here oh a triple date oh with tony b's mom yo charmaine's heard the rumors don't get me wrong as well and she probably oh my gosh everyone's here Arthur's sending something over with his compliments. Thank you. Thank you. Lord knows what's... Yeah, Lord knows Drake, Rick Ross, what's being talked about on those tables. Enjoy. Oh, I saw the way Tony B looked at Charmaine. Hey, Vito, the man with permanent dead silence perk. <laughs> Yo, he's Thank wide, you. man. He is wide. He's good tonight. Come on, they gotta straighten it out. Nice to see you. Hope you have a pleasant evening. <laughs> so old. <laughs> Silvio's at his own table with his missus. Ah, oh, this is great Ladies. stuff. This is great stuff to have these. Like, why? Why is everyone gonna be at Vesuvio's tonight? Patsy just minding his own business, going about things. 
being the perfect mafia man. Tony looks at Karma. Oh, man. You're telling me you're going to end that up? That was 49 minutes of pure entertainment and pure masterpiece of film and television, whatever you want to say. Oh man, what an episode! Oh, I, I I want to I want to watch that dinner scene at the end there. I want the next episode to lead right into it, but I, obviously it's not. And I feel like we left on an awkward note on purpose. I feel like the tel the television writers I feel like David Chase, sorry, intentionally left us on an awkward note right there because I feel like that's how that night's gonna go. It's gonna be awkward. The conversations. Who's gonna break the ice? They're not gonna be free flowing conversations there. We know what's circulating around the air at the moment, um, and that's not going away. You're not gonna get any Glen Twenty ninety nine percent ninety nine point nine percent kill all germs here. That's not gonna go away like that. That there's nothing that's gonna make that rumor go away, especially with Tony there with Carmella and. You know, when you look at Aid, or when whoever looks at Aid is going to look at her differently. Chris is going to look at her differently. Carmella's going to look at her differently. When, oh man, it's absolutely fantastic. Like, if they do get married, that, that wedding is going to be fireworks. It's going to be scenes. Oh, that was such a fantastic episode. Oh man, so, so well paced. So much drama in the span of 49 minutes. It's not elongated. It's just, it's perfection. It's perfection. I hope you guys enjoy my reaction. As always, it's been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.